Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chit Chats, the podcast. The channel with Rascal here. Today, we're going to be talking about City Skylines 2, what's been happening, what's going on. It's been a long time since I checked up on this game, and I just recently opened it up to find, not that one, to find that there is a mostly negative review on the game. I went and scrolled through some of the uh reviews duh some of the reviews and i found one in particular where up until i read this reply right here one stupid ultimate edition owner here yes paradox you are sorry we can agree on that three creative packs and three radio stations might be worth 39.99 to you but they are worthless to me i watch tv while i game i keep music turned off for all games, not just CS2, the more radio stations that I'm never going to listen to has no value to me. And you're saying that's worth 20 bucks, right? Not to me. And I don't pay money for content creator packs, whatever those are. I pay money so developers can create content for me, not the other way around. So yeah, thanks, but no thanks for your apology. You delivered utter crap DLC, you kept my money, and in return I got a sorry not sorry yet another blatant vapor, vaporware? Pitched price, does that say vaporware? Va va I'm going to say vapor. At $39.99 and a slap in the face so you can feel good about yourself. Have I got that right? I was going to let your crappy release get by without a review until you had a chance to fix it. But your sorry not sorry email to me today has prompted me to do otherwise. So yeah, now I'll apologize for to you for not changing course. Here's your big fact negative. I value this review at $39.99 and so should you. Are we good now? Yes, that's actually funny. By the way, for those that don't know what content creator packs, now I do think that he knows what a content creator pack is, but he doesn't fully know what a content creator pack is. But I mean, he suggested that, you know, the devs make content for him therefore he would assume that the creator pack isn't made by the devs i mean i'm gonna assume he played the first game i'm gonna assume that he probably knows what a content creator pack is maybe he's hiding it maybe he has a rough idea and just doesn't fully understand either way i believe in that sentence he has some knowledge of what a content creator pack is for those that don't know what a content creator pack is let me show you a content creator pack is someone i'm assuming content creator of the game who made a in this case a railroad just for the game these are basically assets they are nothing more than assets and they have other people make those assets and then they charge money which goes towards i'm assuming the creator but also towards the disguise as well uh how they can get away with that i have no clue and why people want to do it this way is odd to me because you can just put it up as a mod on steam and there it is but whatever people want to make money doing whatever i'm assuming that city skylines or uh, a paradox i should say i'm assuming that paradox would get a bigger cut compared to the content creator but i cannot say that for sure i don't fully know how this works um but i can tell you that paradox probably gets a cut of some sort if you look at the top sellers just for city skylines you will notice that as you scroll down the content creator packs are not even the top 10. Not even the top 10. This is your first content creator pack right here. And it's skyscrapers. It's just a bunch of, God dang it. It's a bunch of skyscraper buildings and it's an asset. That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Now I have bought two assets, content creator pack assets. I bought this one because of, uh, I think Biffa actually is the reason why I bought this one. And uh, I don't buy creator assets, but if they look good, I will. But they have to look like real good, okay? This was because I was just bored of playing the same freaking maps that I play. And I wanted something different. That's all this was. Uh, I could probably make my own map and do my own thing. But nah, I'm, I don't really want to put the time to do that. 
And even if I did do that, I just put up as a mod. But anyway, map pack. I bought a map pack because I was playing with, uh, I think, Biffa. I was trying to make a city on the same map that he was making it on. And that's basically what I did. What map that was, I have no idea. It might have been this map, but I, I can't say for sure. I, I could have also just bought this by accident, thinking it was actual DLC and not content creator DLC. That's a possibility. I did, however, buy Modern City because I saw Biffa use this as well. And I was like, that looks real good. I really want that. So I bought it. Even though it's mixed, uh, the building's not that different, but I was like, whatever, you know? <laughs> I was like, whatever. I was trying to build the same thing that Biffa was building. I don't care, right? I liked the game so much that I didn't really care. So I bought two content creator packs. You can see that I own every single DLC that uh, Paradox has made themselves. Paradox has made these DLCs themselves. They charge extra for the DLCs that they've made themselves, whilst the content creator packs are like eight bucks. Okay, we're going by the actual price and not the discounted price because it's discounted, right? So the creator packs, one, don't even have value, and two are extremely situational. Okay, so if Paradox was to release the first three creator packs to people, those content creator packs are going to be hit and miss, right? Some people might use them, some people might not use them. It is completely stupid to even do that. Nobody uses the radio. The radio is dumb anyway. The radio doesn't have anything good playing on it. Most people play with the radio off because it's either A, copyright, or B, it's trash. The radio is not good at all. Let's go into the video. Keep this in the back of your mind. It will get brought up at some point. Gather round everybody. There we go. Okay. I mean, react. Everybody. For today, City Skylines 2 Colossal Order published an apology along with mm. some. I just want to say that Paradox doing an apology completely pointless. They should not have done an apology. Um, I think the worst thing you can do as a developer is apologize. Because you've basically given control over to your uh, consumers, okay? So the worst thing to do is to apologize. Your apology could simply just be make the game better. Uh, and that's it. Make the game better. Um, and try to patch as much as you can when it comes to... I mean, the DLC, you completely fucked that up. You completely messed... I don't know. Who even... Anyway... The worst thing they could have done was apologize. Like now the now whatever they had is out of their court. I don't think they should be doing dev dev updates or anything. They should just go into full silent mode and just work on the game personally. Refunds and promised compensation. Some future updates. It's loud enough, I hope so. Delays too. Let's talk what was probably the <clears throat> biggest update about Cities 2 since the game's release. With subscribe worthy time cards below. Let's roll. Mm. Subscribe worthy time cards. It from the top, let's start with this sit rep and apologetic paragraph. Yep. They say we see and understand the disappointment many of you have expressed with City Skylines 2 and beachfront properties subsequently. They look at that. How can you look at what does this look like in the store? I must know what this looks like in the store. So I'm not sure how you can look at this trailer. And see the same one, two, three, four, five, six buildings and be like, yes, I want to buy this. For an asset pack, by the way, an asset pack and you're getting the exact same. That might be one billion put together, but I don't think so. But basically the exact same buildings. Damn. I mean, they looked pretty similar. Let me just pause it. We'll go back. So there's ACs in that one. Oh, they fucking flipped it, man. They did that on purpose, by the way. Looks the same. Looks the same. Looks the same. That one has, I think, has ACs. AC units. AC units. I mean, they look the same. They're going by here. They got fucking... What do they... Look at this. Look at this. They got fucking trees in the way. Okay. Then you go here, you got trees in the way and then you got the sun right in your eye. So you can't even see the building because of the shadow that's happening. Like, look at this. You can't even pause it. 
and then you have the, the sun right in front of you. You can't even see the assets. Again, same thing. You can't even see the, what the assets look like unless you pause it. Now they're going to show these assets. Mm -hmm. It looks the same. Now it's level five. So we, we figured out what the problem is. Got it. This one just leveled up. So they're just manually changing the level. Look at this. You got the same one, two, three, four, five looked look alike models right in front of you. One, two, three, four, five. Because they're all level two. So when all of these go up to level five, they're gonna be the exact same building, right? Is that how that's gonna work? They're the same building at level two. I mean they gotta be the same building at level five. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Wait, what's this? What is this that I just saw? Okay. They extended. Complete. Rebuild. New building. New building, it looks like. Ooh. Maybe, maybe that's good, actually. I mean, one, two, three, the same buildings, like uh, right back to the problem. Yeah. So I don't know how you can look at this and then be like, yeah, I want this asset that has the same buildings. Like look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11. Like there's, th these all look the same. They don't look different at all. It's the same buildings, man. Ask for patience. There's no variety. And I'm pretty sure that when they level, they're going to look the same anyway. So it's not even going to matter. Like one. Ooh, yep, two. One, two, right beside each other. Same building, right beside each other. Same buildings here. Maybe he did that on purpose. I don't know. I don't think so, though. Patience and support, and we've shown those. And in return, anyway, quote, we let you down. I don't know how you can look at this and be like, yes, I want this asset. And look at it. It's so beautiful. It's the same fucking buildings, man. They what do you mean? They could make up for the shortcomings of the game in a time frame that was unrealistic and rushed out a DLC that should not have been published in its current form. Why would they do that? They literally rushed. They literally rushed out the game. I don't know why they did, but they definitely rushed out the game. I think it was actually for a game that they had worked on that flopped. So they rushed out this game instead. And I don't know why they did that because the game definitely needed to be in the oven way longer than what it was 100%. I mean, if you look at, I mean, just based off of this, look at this, just based off of this alone. I mean, you look at this, okay? You look at all this and then you compare that to this. Look at that. That looks, even though it's still technically the same thing, it still looks way better than a freaking crane, okay? It needed to be cooked way longer, okay? I, when, I wanna, when I watch things build, I want to watch them actually build, even if it's just something small. Now, this is the first game, so, like, we can get past that. But, like, I wanted this to be more more in-depth because we're doing building simulators. So, if we go to this one now, uh, Manor, Manor Lords, right here. We go to this one and we watch the stuff be built in this game. Oh my god. Look at how they look, look at how they actually build the buildings. Look at this. Look at this being built right here. I'm blocking the way. Look at this building being built. They're gonna build something else too somewhere. I don't know why I'm pointing, but they're gonna build something else somewhere too. Watch this. And you can walk around in first person, by the way. You can go into your character and walk around in first person. You can walk around your city. Exactly what people wanted from the first game. They should have got the clue right there. You can walk around in your city in this game. And stuff is actually being built. That's what you want in the game. At least that. Is their words, they go on to say, quote, for all this, we are truly sorry. The worst that you could have done right there. End quote. They conclude this section by saying, you know, they've made promises before. They've pledged to keep making improvements. They'll continue to do that.
but the speed and magnitude of those improvements has been unacceptable and that has lost player trust yep. and they want to do better. This is probably the most open, transparent apology and indeed an apology that includes the word sorry and truly sorry at that that we've seen from Colossal Order to date. And in my opinion, it sets the tone for the rest of this week's update, a marked step away from some of the kinds of things and the way that we've discussed things previously when we've reflected on these updates and moving into something a little bit different. Let's now delve into the real detail, the crux of it, refunds and compensation. Mm -hmm. So as part this was, so the, the community basically said that they wanted refunds and then compensations for buying the $140 version of the game. Why you would buy a $140 version of a simulator game blows my mind. But here we are. Blows my mind that you would buy a $140 version of a simulator, a single player simulator game. Now, I wouldn't even pay, is it $120? Nope, 100 and, nope, 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 120 apparently. Someone said it was 140 I don't know what the hell they got that price from. Maybe with taxes, 140 Why you would pay this price for a single player game? blows my mind what were you even promised in the freaking game let's 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 cut down to the bare bones of what the hell we're actually promised so in the ultimate edition you got the san francisco set the beach properties a creator pack another creator pack bridge and ports deluxe relax station soft rock radio and cold wave channel so you got radio radio whatever the hell this is radio so radio 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 assets creator pack creator pack asset and theme and you you thought that was worth 140 140 bucks yeah why you would buy something like that i have no fucking clue did you even look at the ultimate what you got with it before you purchased it sir <laughs> like what are you doing why would you pay 140 bucks for that uh I wouldn't even pay 170 bucks for it, but I was so excited about this game, I didn't care. Or uh, 70 bucks for it, yeah. I wouldn't even pay $70 for it because it's just a single player build city. The simulator, I wouldn't even pay 70 bucks for it. However, I did because I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the first game. But I would not pay 120 bucks for assets, radio, and a theme. I'm good, bro. Part of this new step forward. The That's new just not good. City Skylines 2, what's going on? They say the very first thing they're If they were going to offer like three or four DLCs, like actual um Paradox built DLCs, then sure, I could probably I could maybe justify that. But even then, the base game itself isn't even worth 70 bucks. Maybe 20, maybe 40 at most is compensate those who have purchased beach properties the latest dlc of yeah of course with negative reviews so overwhelmingly negative i yeah. struggle to come up with words to describe them and this was of course not a surprise to mm. anybody following along in this story so my bad how i hit the pause button by accident this? they say that they'll change the pack to be a free addition to the game Okay, so everybody that purchased the Ultimate Edition for that pack is now being ripped off because they just put it as a free edition. I'm going to be honest, you get what you deserve. Uh, you should have looked into what you were buying before you bought it. Refunding it to the greatest extent possible and providing additional content within the Ultimate Edition. Okay. This is, of course, where there's a bit of a cap. I wonder what the, ulti what the, the ultimate additional edition. content is. Well this refund is more compensation than refund they mm -hmm. say unfortunately i mean to be fair the community did ask for compensation they asked for sorry and they asked for compensation that's what they asked for fortunately it will not be possible to offer refunds for ultimate edition buyers. Yeah. and then this is the problem that you get when you don't just ask for straight up refunds because you wanted a compensation instead of a refund this is due to the, the problem right here ultimate edition across digital and physical storefronts which creates significant complexities for executing mm -hmm. a partial refund. Yeah. So what's going to happen now Quote, we is that this oh. is far from ideal, especially given the dedication those who have stayed with us since launch have shown. Mm -hmm. We are committed to repaying that loyalty, and therefore we will compensate the ultimate edition holders by adding three creative packs and 
three radio stations which together sum up to the value of 39.99 US dollars. This solution hopefully ensures that you, regardless of purchase method, feel you receive fair compensation. No, <laughs> that's that is not gonna cut it, man. Is that what they just added to this? Maybe. Yeah, I don't see a, a third content creator map pack. I only see two or creator pack. I mean. So anyway, uh, I mean, you ask for comp, you ask for an apology, and you ask for compensation. They gave you the your they gave you the apology. They gave you compensation. Uh, hopefully this is a big fucking learning curve to not ask for compensation. Just ask for a refund. Uh, I don't know. Let's just try and do that instead. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, man. End quote. So, what did we just hear? Well, mm -hmm. if you purchased beachfront properties separately, like I did, then you and I will be getting a refund. Essentially, keep the 10 or 20 beachfront properties in the four palm trees for free. It's free stuff now. Nice. We'll give you your money back. If, mm -hmm. however, you pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition way back when, you, unfortunately, won't be eligible for a refund due to complexities and instead three creator packs and three radio stations. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this is a, a life learned lesson for everybody. Probably not. But hopefully this is a life learned lesson to not just jump into something based off of hype. Okay. Uh, or to not pre-order things that are just way overpriced. Okay. Like I said, paying 140 bucks for an ultimate edition of a single player game is ridiculous. It's just, it blows my mind. Like... I don't understand how no one saw this coming, considering most of this was in the first City of Skylines. Most of the City of Skylines stuff was mod promotion and creator pack promotions, and it, it, with a sprinkle of Paradox actual DLC. Just a small sprinkle, but even that sprinkle wasn't even that good. Like, a mod could have done what they did for the most part. I don't know. <laughs> will be added to the Ultimate Edition in place of the Beach Properties DLC. Mm -hmm. They also say, interestingly here, that they'll total 39.99 US, around two thirds of the total of the game at full price by itself. That is quite some value that is assigned there. So, by what? DLC, <laughs> Hold up. Instead, three creator packs and three radio stations will be added to the Ultimate Edition in place of the Beach Properties DLC. They also say, interestingly here, that they'll total 39.99 US, around two thirds of the total of the game at full price by itself. That is quite some value. That but, is did it just offer to make a discount on the game? Is that what happened? I don't understand that part. There. So perhaps you'll consider yourselves lucky. It is of course a little bit of a mixed bag here, but ultimately it should end up with a win-win. As far as I can see it, this is more content. Look at that farm. There's literally nothing happening on this farm. It's literally just a big brown stain of shit. They took... Well, you know what they did? They took the pollution from the first game, and they're like, how can we make something even more shittier? I know. Let's make all the farmland brown with no life. It'll look like complete dog shit, and everybody will hate it, but it'll be funny. <laughs> However, anyway, it may not surprise you, especially the diligent watchers, that this new content will of course come at a cost, and that cost will be time. Let's move on yep. to paragraph 3 on future updates and DLC. Mm -hmm. Here in paragraph... That's crazy. So they're going to offer you compensation instead of a refund if you purchase the Ultimate Edition, but you have to wait for your compensation because just because <laughs> man you guys got fucked <laughs> We're talking about future updates for cities too but not just the game itself also some kind of broader managerial life lesson for hopefully everybody don't rush into a game now granted they did sell this game as a fully completed game i'm pretty sure it wasn't early access i, I don't think it was i'm pretty sure they advertise it 
or at least sold it as a fully completed game. I can't say 100% sure on that because I actually forget. Like, I haven't kept up with this game in, I don't know how, since I did that one video. Talking about how the game literally has no challenge at all. Like, you can literally do anything in the game. And the game won't punish you even though it should, but it doesn't. So ever since I made that video. Um, yeah, hopefully a life lesson for everybody to not rush into a game, but no one's going to learn that lesson. Nobody does. I do, though. Real back-end functions, if you will, behind Cities 2. That's why I didn't buy the ultimate version of this game. It and see what they say. Okay. Looking ahead, they want to make immediate and meaningful changes. There are mm -hmm. basically three. The first one is a focus on improving the base game and modding tools. Here, read between the lines, we're probably talking patch updates. Yeah. Secondly, they want to, quote, better involve you, the community, end quote, as they select their priorities moving forward. Additional free patches, game updates in the coming months before Colossal Order spends time on new paid content. This results, of course, in a shift that paid content the Bridges and Ports expansion specifically now shifted to some point in 2025. So, Ultimate Edition. No way! They shifted that to 2025? Yeah. The takeaway for you here, and indeed anybody interested in buying the DLC, is that you're going to have to wait a little bit longer while the team now prioritizes free updates to the modding tools. I mean, it's fucking Bridges. Like, come on, why would you buy that? Base game, so on and so forth. On the back end side of things, but still potentially quite interesting. They say to make sure that they focus on the right things, they've put together an advisory meeting. A small group of player representatives, together with Colossal Order and Paradox Interactive, to discuss the development plan for the rest of the year. The people in the group are chosen for the size of their following within the community to represent as many as possible. The teams from Colossal Order and Paradox Interactive will provide them with full transparency, answering questions and critiques voiced. Their hope is that together with the community, they can make sure that they don't repeat the same mistakes that they've made in the past and bring the game into a bright future and a bright future that the bones. Why don't I just, just literally go into ultra silence mode? Just go into complete darkness and just focus on fixing the game. That's all you need to do. Just complete darkness. Don't say shit. There's no point. There's no one playing your game. There's like 5,000 people. Uh, complete dark or less. Go into complete darkness and just fix the main core of the game. Once that's fixed, try to focus on releasing that DLC at the same time you, in, you make those changes saying, hey, this is a major update. This is all the things we've fixed. Here is a massive list of all the things we've fixed. And we're releasing that Bridges and Ports DLC when we release this massive update. That would be the best thing that you could possibly do right now. This overtime shit is boring and it's going to fall and it's going to fall fast because nobody, literally nobody cares. You have a community of five or 3,000 people that still actually give a shit playing the game. Uh, everybody's moved past or moved back to City Skylines 1. Like I said, your best option is to go into complete incognito mode and just focus on fixing the game. That's it. That's all you can do. It's the core of the game I believe absolutely deserves. It's unclear to us how large this group is, who's in it. Yeah. I assume that will become obvious as time moves forward, but for now, that's all we know. I think it's One dumb. It's a dumb decision. Was mentioned in this paragraph. The creator packs that are being added to the Ultimate Edition are being produced independently and will not take up focus from the core team who are working to Of course, because the it's the creator packs. Any focus, in fact, away from that core work. I because it's it creator packs. Just it's not made by them. To round out our understanding. Now let's move on to, unfortunately, some future further delays for another <sighs> second group of City's players. Oh yeah? Who? Or perhaps not players, unless I'm talking about City Skylines 1. We got the sad music playing. It's time to focus on the console release. Something that... Oh, no. ...shockingly quiet about yeah. in recent times. They said Did they not get it? ...the pending console release. As you know, the plan was to release it in spring of this year. That would be 
Northern Hemisphere sometime around now-ish. They have been hesitant to communicate yeah. an actual release window because of the uncertainty they're facing and to not make further promises they mightn't be able to keep. They say, we have been struggling to get City Skylines 2 to the necessary level of optimization for a console release. It's just optimization in general. Like the optimization for this game sucks ass. It's garbage. Why would you release the way that it, why would you release it in the way that it was released? Like I make a small tiny city and my frames just immediately drop from a small tiny little city. It's not, I'm not talking like, I'm not talking like a small actual city. I'm talking like I'm still on Island one and I have maybe I'm still in the first square, okay? I'm in the first square. I'm in not that far away. Like, <laughs> I, I basically cover the entire first square of my first starting zone, and the game's like, no. <laughs> this, oh, the optimization was bad. And there were people defending the optimization. They're dumb. Simple as that. You go into... uh. Whatever that game was that I was talking about. Manor? Manor? Lord Manor? Something like that? Manor Lords. You go into this game. This game, way better graphics. Everything is beautiful in this game. You can go into first person in this game. I still get like 100 plus FPS. No problem. Zero issue. <sighs> but I'm now hopeful. And it's top down too. I still get good, amazing FPS. Will demonstrate sufficient progress for us to progress with a release candidate, and then a release build targeted for October. Before Damn. We've seen an evaluation. Sufficient progress for us to progress with the release candidate, and then. Okay. The progress so they're trying to get it for October, which is two months away from Christmas. Made. In these build this could be a this could be a business tactic. I don't fully trust them. However, we will not be able to confirm the release date, and even then, some uncertainty also remains. Yeah. Our ambition is to deliver the experience that you all deserved at launch, but it will take time. It's important to note that the team working on the console release operates separately from our PC development team, so it will be progressing without splitting our focus or time. End quote. Now, that was quite a long quote. A lot of wordiness around some uncertainty, different versions of builds, but at the crux of it, they're targeting a release build for October 2024. Which might not even happen. Six months away from the time of recording, and there's also some reassurance that PC development is separate or operates separately from the team working on the console release. Now, I'll let you read into how far that separation goes, i.e. how far up the chain do you have to get until it's the same body. I have no idea. Who knows? An important thing to mention nonetheless though, given how much pressure is under City Skylines 2 or, or is under- Look at these graphics. Look at these. They're all pixelated. They're not even, they don't even look good. Look at those. It looks like shit. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. It looks like utter trash. You're gonna go down here to look at some stuff. It looks like garbage. Given how much pressure is under holy the crap, too, or, or is under the team producing it. Look at that. They even got little it's pixels on the car here too. Have one more paragraph. A close That's crazy. Signed off not just by the CEO of Colossal Order this week, but also by the deputy CEO. Where's this car going? Of Paradox Interactive. So this car just made a legal U-turn. And then round out everything we've discussed because it was certainly a significant vocal voiced update from the team this week in closing they want to reaffirm their dedication to making cities to the best city builder it can be appreciate their support and feedback hope to regain trust moving forward acknowledging it's their responsibility to earn it and they hope that these actions are a first step in the right direction deeply grateful for continued passion for the game Please stay tuned, they say, for further updates on the game and the refund process. And thank you for being part of the community. And that rounds out their update. So what are actually those actions that they're talking about? 
these actions the first step. Well, Beachfront Properties is no longer a paid DLC. After mm -hmm. a bombshell launch, highly disappointing, that has now become free content for yep. future City Sky. Free content. If you purchased it as an individual pack, you can get that refund. If you bought it for a deluxe edition, you're SOL. Sucks to suck. Skylines to buyers to enjoy. If you already had the Ultimate Edition, you will instead have somewhat of a replacement on offer. With Not really. Creator packs and radio stations. Yeah, those both of those suck ass, by the way. That is the worst deal you could get for 140 bucks. You just got scammed. Not literally, but like... No, I would say literally. Yeah, you literally got scammed. <laughs> to the Ultimate Edition. In yep. That paid slot that used to be reserved by the beachfront DLC. that's crazy everything else inside of the ultimate edition the future announced expansions for cities 2 have been delayed most importantly mm -hmm. that bridges and waterfronts dlc now scheduled for some in 2020 just more assets my take is it's nice to see them say sorry it was something that a lot of people have been asking for they've sort of flirted with a little bit yeah they said sorry and now they're taking that sorry and they're using it to push something else they shouldn't have, they shouldn't apologize they shouldn't have said anything they should have just went incognito mode and just focus on making the core game way better than what it is now why do they need the community to do that i have no idea because they may see the skylines one and they didn't have literally any community at that time when they were making that game and then the community grew over time right so how they can't simply take that model that first game and just improve upon that first game blows my mind Maybe I, don't, I don't know where we fucked up here ages of it but never properly landed on it I think this is their best attempt so far. So yeah, there is no attempt. There is no attempting an apology. You either do or you don't. Simple as that. To them, credit where credit is due. There is it's no also credit. It's nice to hear a renewed, if not increased, focus on City Skylines 2, the base game. Because do we know it? It still needs some significant improvement. I know, I can see all the pixels still in these freaking clothes. Cities, perhaps with six figure populations, just one pivotal point that still needs to be addressed for Cities 2 to take a spot that it hopefully, or indeed I suspect, will take one day, right mm. up at the top of the city building throne, if you will. However, mm. that we'll see. is still some ways off, and of course, the team Way off. will have much to prove. Mm -hmm. Will these words translate into tangible actions? The first step will be to refund and replace, or compensate, for the beachfront night they should just refund everybody that's my wait and see moving forward Thank the community so the community asking for compensation for the dlc was a bad thing to do they should just ask for a refund they should have been like hey if they had a physical copy of the deluxe edition they should have went back to wherever the hell they bought it from be like here's my receipt they're refunding this dlc i bought the deluxe edition please give me back my uh money for this specific dlc i have the receipt for it that was they should have just done that. If it if it was on Steam, just refund them back whatever that freaking thing was. This guy has the this guy has the deluxe edition. Refund them. For joining me in this. He got fucked. Y'all got fucked. From Colossal Order and Paradox Interactive today. I'll see uh, you next time. Sure. So basically, uh, we're still. I went to check up on the game. We're still not playing this game. And this game came out. When this game come out? It's now been six months. And we still can't go back to this game. Half a year and what has improved? Literally nothing, apparently. Nothing has improved at all. Half a year. That's crazy. I, I, I blame the people that were in the community hubs. Um, yeah, the community hub. I blame the people that were in here. Uh, just completely kiss assing the devs the entire time since release when everybody knew what the major problems were and those problems probably could have been fixed way sooner if these guys had just been like hasn't haven't been blowing smoke up the devs ass because basically these guys are just chilling okay but when this when this game released there was a lot of kiss assing happening right now it seems to be kind of chill everybody just in here asking actual questions being kind of chill that's good to see Especially from uh, someone that said that the community is very toxic. I opened up that forum. I saw no toxicity. I went in there. 
thinking that there'd be toxicity. I saw none. So I'm just going to put that out there. So when I say that the community wanted uh, accountability and compensation, three months ago, they were asking for it. And here's the video. Prove it. This is Phil. Great guy. Big city skylines. Here we go. Let's watch this. Don't know him. Oh, React to this. City planner. So why am I making a video about him? Because he's going to tell chill. the media exactly how most of us feel about City Skylines 2 and has mm -hmm. stood up for us players and builders. And why is this important? Because he is large enough to do so and Colossal Order will listen. Or at worst, they oh. will at least read his media interview. Phil has asked for exactly what we want and has directed it at Colossal Order by the media, namely in Gadget Media News Source, in an article entitled What's Up With The Toxicity Around City Skylines 2? Colossal Order is asking for civility. The community wants accountability. Yeah, basically an apology. In a very diplomatic way, used his city planner decorum to really send what I perceive as a veiled threat to CO, be accountable or players won't forgive you. Mm -hmm. The article starts out by delivering background information oh, they might. for City Skylines and how we'll CS1 was a huge success mm -hmm. and then delves into the pre-launch of City Skylines 2 and how <sighs> early access was given to selected City Skylines content creators to basically give Paradox free advertising. Okay, well listen, like that's just going to happen. Uh, uh, wait, they didn't get paid for it? If they didn't get paid for it, then yes, I can see how that would be. But if they paid them for it, um, sure. Prior to the City Skylines 2 release, right. I think that most... I wonder if they... Do they have to announce that they were... If they got paid for it, they would they would have to announce it, I'm pretty sure, right? They didn't get paid for it, because if they got paid for it, it would have been like, hey, this is paid paid advertisement, paid promotion, something like that. So, no, it, it was for free. Got it. The community. That's unfortunate. Incredibly positively, looking at them as one of us, and the type of developer that you want making a game that you love, Phil said. They were okay. viewed as responsive and generous. I, I agree. Call a bad thing being said about them. I also that agree. True. Colossal for the first game, yeah. Has a high, amazing score of ninety-two percent on Steam for City Skylines One, yep. and has held a reputation up there with some of the most trusted brands in the world. Yeah. Back then, I would have proudly walked around town with a City Skylines shirt and have people say, "Great game," or "Hey, mm -hmm. you play that game?" Or my friends wouldn't give me grief about it because when the IGN score is six out of ten was released for City Skylines Two, I got a barrage of DMs and texts from my friends saying, "Yeah, ah, you're." sequel sucks come join us on the <laughs> so even yeah the gamers caught wind of how much city skylines 2 sucked meet the because it was it was overly hyped and people bought into it i bought i bought the game because i played the first game so i was buying it no matter what okay i was like hopefully the gameplay is good hopefully they made improvements that'll be enough to keep me satisfied they didn't do any of that of players and consumers sucked the once could do no wrong post a pinup girl of city building development maria harlekinen yeah on january 15th and surprisingly said yes yeah, the co growing tendency of toxicity in our community something we have not experienced to this extent before she wrote clarifying that the negativity was directed at developers and players alike yeah she continued, we have always treasured having the devs present on the different social platforms and having direct communication with the community, but mm -hmm. our biggest responsibility will always be protecting the team. That's great. How about you listen to the feedback and make a good game? I like that idea. Now, if you're getting like death threats and shit like that, like that's, of course, like that's something way different. But if you're getting like feedback of how your game sucks ass and why it sucks ass you should probably take that constructive criticism and fix it just go fix it your game sucks ass because every time i try to build something the building has no meaning because my money doesn't go down my population doesn't go down and there's like no traffic problems at all my my city is somehow perfect even though i deliberately fucked it up your game is not a simulator. Now, if they want to take that as toxic, toxic, toxicity, I guess, then like we have no hope for this dev team in the future. That's for sure. Any hope that we had is gone. Okay. If they have that mindset going forward.
and I can understand that. That's a poor mindset. Because recommended specs were increased just before release and console was delayed. Yeah. Phil replied by saying, CD Skylines 2 strained his RTX 4090 graphics card, making it run at 100% on the yeah. main menu, and he couldn't play in 4K at launch because the game was so GPU-bound. Mm -hmm. Simply put, it feels like the game needed more time in development. Phil then continues to it did. in a very diplomatic but correct way. Since the launch of City Skylines 2, things have without a doubt gone more prickly. While yep. many people have been appreciative of Colossal Order's transparency, which is good, updates as well as the frequent bug fixes, mm -hmm. many appear to view Colossal Order as being all too willing to release a game that wasn't ready to be released, he said. Yep. Halakainen did acknowledge the shortcomings of CS2 and vowed to fix them. And the journalist of this article, Jessica Condit, says that the issue, as far as Colossal Order sees it, lies in the community's response to City Skylines 2. Players have been venting on social media and in the Steam and Paradox forums, and the feedback yeah. has risen to toxic levels. Okay, so you're going to take feedback. I mean, over I, I, you should expect that over time, as stuff is being recommended to you, and you're not doing the things or changing the things that are being recommended to you. And you're just ignoring them. I don't know how you can simply be like, ah, they won't get that bad. Even though you're not doing a fucking thing about it to fix it. Like, how do you not expect, how do you not expect it to get worse? I don't understand. Like, and then you want to bring the community in to, f to help fix the game after you just shat on them for saying that they're toxic. Are you kidding me? I just went to the forums. There's nothing going on in the forums. It's toxic at all. It looks pretty chill over there. I was expecting someone to be a, to be trolling or something, but like, nah, it's pretty chill over there. So I don't know where the hell this person got their information from, but that person so far that I saw in just one forum uh, on Steam is wrong. So, but that's feedback, frustration, and passion all coming right to you because you won't fix the game that people want to play. She cites a surge in personal attacks on developers and other players. Mm -hmm. While I personally personal attack personal attacks are not okay. Okay, if you're telling someone to like to like KYS, uh, oh, oh, I don't want to get into a list of it, but like stuff of the level of KYS and above that, that's not going to help anybody. Agree. <clears throat> attacks on other players, especially the people that love the game and are happy, and also the developers individually, mm -hmm. I feel there is no toxicity aimed at Paradox or Colossal Order. They deserve the barrage of comments, and mm -hmm. even the mean ones aimed at the company as an entity, yes. because they are just venting. And Paradox... Are yeah, if people want to say that... Company. Yeah, exactly. If people want to say that Paradox is a scam company, and Paradox says this person's toxic, no, that person is not toxic. You literally charged 140 bucks and you can't even deliver on the stuff that was in the, in the DLC in the 140 bucks off the bundle. I should say bundle in the $140 bundle. You can't even deliver on what you wanted to, to put in there. It's crazy. Publicly listed and should be because the game got that bad. The game that got that bad where you had to release a free DLC to try and bring people back. Nobody gives a shit. Because it's just assets. I I don't know. <laughs> like, quits, like any company to put aside comments. Twenty one billion dollars and you can't fix your game. Okay. Consumers and customers in any way. If you yeah for something, whether it be a Tesla or mm -hmm. coffee, you mm -hmm. have a right to express your opinion. Agree. Like or distrust Agreed. the company. I can go back to Tim Hortons and be like, hey, this coffee tastes burst as shit. It tastes like it's at the bottom of the cut of the of the pot. Can I please get a new one? And they'll give you a new one. Halakainen calls for constructive feedback and respectful discussions, and I do amongst each other. Even if, even if you drop your coffee by accident, they'll refill it for you one time. So if you go into the store, order a coffee, leave, and then something happens that makes you drop it, like say someone bumped into you, or it just was just too hot, maybe it slipped out, either way, right? Something happened at some point for your coffee to end up on the floor. If you bring the cup back and be like, hey, uh, I accidentally dropped my cup of coffee. Uh, uh, dropped my coffee. Is there any way I can get a new one? They'll give you one. They'll give you one. That's it, though. They'll give you one new one for free. That's all you're getting, though. If you drop it again, that's a you issue. 
customers we which i like to be respectful of each other mm -hmm. in terms of co and paradoxes in Boston, that's how you keep the customers right there they need to manage it it's not up to us to be blamed yes imagine if apple came out and told their customers to sit down and be nice mm -hmm. paradox is a billion dollar company they can handle it and they shouldn't cry about it in mm -hmm. fact they are crying about toxicity shows they aren't in control yep. but i do strongly agree that the player on player hate needs to stop the article then says for city planner plays and other community members the issue is the game itself yes the colossal order seeks toxicity Philip says he sees justified frustration. Yes. Phil continues to say, I will admit that I was taken aback by this description of what's happening in the city skylines community regarding CS2, he said. I have noticed increased negativity. However, I mm -hmm. wouldn't say that I have noticed increased toxicity. And yep. bluntly, I think the negativity is completely understandable and, and predictable. Yeah. Phil then highlighted four factors driving negative sentiment. The game is only on PC. True. Buggy and unplayable on many common hardware configurations. Also true. No official support for mods. And mm -hmm. Colossal Order hasn't held itself accountable for the game's blunders. Yep. Feel content. I think Biffa even tried to help the devs at some point, saying that you don't need. He made a video of how you don't need mods to play CD Skylines 2. But, uh,. When you play the game on PC and PC is your main platform and you've been using mods for years on the first game, I think it's very hard to, to just give up those mods that you love so much and just use all the time. Um, so while I can see where maybe he meant like, I didn't watch the video, I just read the title of course, but he probably didn't mean as like you can, you don't ever need mods, you know what I mean? Like console players, you ain't going to get mods, it is what it is. It sucks, sucks to suck buy a PC don't even bother because the game's bad but uh, you don't ever need mods but there are ways to build your city and have fun without mods right in, in its current state uh, obviously that didn't really go so well because the game like I said is still bad if the game wasn't bad I can see I think people would be okay with not having mods for a while but the game is bad continues so. Colossal Order has been transparent talking yeah. to the community, but it is not taking accountability for the release. That's not, that's not me shit-talking Biffa, by the way. I like Biffa. Biffa, chill. I'm just saying that he made a video just trying how to play the game without mods, and uh, the game was just too poorly optimized anyway, so it didn't really matter if you could play the game with or without mods because the game was literally unplayable. So, so the game... I hear this over Unfortunately. and over again. Many players appear to want to hear them to admit that the release of the game was poor, mm -hmm. say that they are sorry, and make some gesture to make amends. Yeah, so so this is exactly so what the community asked for specifically, the devs did. They s admitted that it was a poor decision. They said they were truly sorry, and to make amends, they gave you content packs and radio stations instead of you giving you your uh money back instead of giving you a refund for that fucking dlc that they released for free to date rip they have delayed the dlc release which actually was a huge negative for people that purchased the ultimate edition of the game yep. but not made amends yep they haven't provided the information that people... Or that, whatever the heck happened. I don't even know fully what happened. That's exactly right, Phil. Us players want an apology and some gesture to make amends. I don't. I don't want an apology. Um, I didn't buy the deluxe edition, so that's not my problem. Like I said, I wouldn't buy a $140 worth of a game, a single-player game. I would not spend 140 bucks on it. I wasn't even going to spend $70 on it, but I was like, ah, if it's fun, it's fun. So there it is. We paid upwards of $140 for C Exactly. The worst thing you could have done right there. Skylines 2, and Steam won't refund it if you played beyond... That's just straight game. greed. The game is not worth $140. It's not even worth 70 bucks. gesture would be to provide a cashback to all Steam players of a certain value or free DLC for a certain period. There you go, see? ...period of time. Phil then talks about the lack of promise modding and how that... So the community just fucked themselves because they asked for something other than a refund. You should have just made it a refund and stuck with the refund instead. This has impacted the game. Should not have offered an, an outcome. Community was built a way out for them to keep your money. Easy 
to use platform. And with the delay of the console release, the current player base is simply being inconvenienced. Phil then says this about the current maps. The maps that come with the game aren't great. Yeah, they suck. Incredibly high difficulty level. They're not difficult, but and I don't agree with that. Features need refinement. That I agree Alkynen with. Alkynen has admitted that they failed in modding support and were doing the best they could, but at no point have they come out and used the word sorry. Phil don't need to. the article by saying, I think the most toxic people right now are the game's biggest fans. True. And bluntly, they are just disappointed that the game doesn't run well for them or that they can't play it at all. Exactly. They're disappointed and lashing out, which isn't right. But to me, that means that there is a path to repair the issues if the game is fully fixed and accountability is taken. Yeah. Well done, Phil. On so, uh, hopefully Paradox learns that um to not listen to the community on certain things but i mean the community asked for something other than a refund no the community asked the community opted for a different way out other than just a straight up refund and it backfired on them massively you should have asked just straight out asked for a refund you should not have given them an alternative technically that's on you that's your own fault for fucking up there and uh, they didn't have to say sorry, but they didn't. Did they really say sorry if they just fucked you over anyway in the end? You know, was it really an apology if they still fucked you over? Not really. Publicly, what? Not really. Thinking, could he have? But they still kept your 140 bucks. But I think he found the right measure as a content creator, a previous Paradox affiliate, and a consumer of the product as well to mm -hmm. send them a message without burning bridges to get Colossal Order to say sorry and make a grand gesture to us consumers. Okay, well, apparently it wasn't dumb, but it got cut off anyway. Um, but like I said, I they should not have offered a way out. They should have just asked for a refund. That's a straight up game releasing new yeah releasing broken games have become a new norm i hope the game community will find a way to push back against this behavior um let me tell you something uh the gaming community as a whole is stupid uh they eat literally anything if they see a pile of shit they will eat that pile of shit and then eat the pile of shit hiding underneath the pile of shit now unfortunately CD Skylines 2 tried to use the same business model and that business model backfired because they are not a live service game. They are a single player only. You can't play with other people. Why they tried to do this is beyond me. Most of the people playing your game are well established uh, 25, 30, 40 year old people with jobs and everything that want to make, that just want to Come home, sit down, and make a beautiful building after work or some shit like that. You know? We're not talking about, like, brain-dead Call of Duty. We're not talking about that game, okay? We ain't talking about that game. We ain't talking about freaking what else is brain-dead these days. I, I don't know. What else is brain-dead? Call of Duty is the most brain-dead thing. People eat that shit up like it's nothing. <laughs> like, like it's nothing. Uh, I think Diablo 4 followed the same path, I think it was. I think War of the War, no War of the War, no War of the Warcraft was going down that trend, and then they, uh, and then the community pushed back against it for a little bit, but it's still heading down the same direction. Uh, Halo, I played Halo, re Halo Infinite recently. Halo Infinite. Uh, actually, I can't really say about Halo Infinite. I don't know about, I don't know about their DLCs. I actually lied about that. I don't really know all about their DLCs and what they do and don't fix. All I know is that the hit registration is trash in that game. That's all I know. Um, what else? Starfield. Starfield was another one. A single player game released that was just rushed out and not thought out at all. Too many high expectations. Too many promises. Broken. If you're going to make a single player game and single player game only, you have to stick to making the game good because ultimately the single player experience is what's going to keep the players at least invested for a period of time in that game while they wait for you to do something else with it okay now i mean it's technically it's not a single player game so, so to speak well no it is a play a single player game because you can't play with anybody right well i mean fucking uh the starfield wasn't a single player game you could play with people 
believe. Could you? I actually don't even know. I didn't play Starfield. I ain't gonna lie. All I know is that game was fucking trash. <laughs> That's all I know. Ah, that game was garbage. Um. So yeah, hopefully this is a learning uh, experience for everybody. Um, when someone completely removes something that they promised you in a bundle, or they said that was going to be in a bundle, and you pay extra for that specific bundle plus other bundles, um, I would have just requested. I honestly, I would have just requested a full one hundred and forty dollar refund because the content, the one thing in the content isn't getting released. The other content in the bundle is being delayed. So now you have all this stuff that you're just sitting there waiting for while um, Paradox does whatever the hell they want with your money, with your $140 worth of money. You just, you just, you literally got scammed. <laughs> you literally got scammed. Straight up. What else is going to come in that bundle? I don't know. I only know what was listed in the bundle in the Steam store. That's all I know. Um... But yeah, I mean, that sucks. So hopefully, I mean, I learned my lesson. I'm going to tell you something, okay? I learned my lesson from that. I pre-ordered CD Skylines 2, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and what else did I pre-order? I pre-ordered something else. CD Skylines 2, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Oh, Sons of the Force. I pre-ordered three games. Three games. One, I was a little hesitant of, which was um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I was hesitant of buying that one. But I bought it anyway. Never, ever, ever, ever did I buy a deluxe edition for the game. I only bought the base game, and that was it. If there was additional content locked behind the other modes, I want to experience the base game first before I even consider buying the extra DLC that you have for your game, okay? Uh, so, yeah, I only bought ever bought the base game. That's it. I didn't pay nothing else. Just the base game. Um, So, three games I bought at the same time. I took off... I took time off work to play all three of those games. All three of those games. Massive disappointments. I am glad that I only bought the base game and not the actual additional content that came with it a hundred percent um and now because i was so hyped for those three games and they were all three disappointments i am never going to pre-order a game ever again i'm going to look it up on youtube see what it looks like see what it plays like and if i go ah okay this game could be fun then i'll buy it but until then i ain't doing that shit anymore um the only time that i bought a deluxe edition was modern warfare uh call of duty Advanced Warfare. I just got off the Ghost train. I pre-ordered Advanced Warfare. I loved Ghost. Ghost was my favorite game. I am a Ghost fan. I loved it so much. So good. Uh, I pre-ordered Advanced Warfare. Also really liked that game. That game was not bad, but it wasn't for me. The jumping, the the boost packs is just freaking stupid. Like I'm not. I don't want to play Halo. If I want to play Halo, I'd go play Halo. Like <laughs> I just, I would just go play Halo. Like <laughs> I don't want to play this freaking. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So that was the first and last time I ever bought a deluxe version of any game. After that freaking fiasco, I was like, hell no. I'm so good. Um, and now I will never buy a... I will never pre-order a game, period. Ever. Because of what? Uh, CD Skylines 2, Sons of the Forest, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre have put me through. And that's, that's just, it's just a life experience, you know? That's just a life experience. It is what it is. I'm also trying to get out of the habit of pre-ordering game or uh, buying games based off of hype. Okay, I'm trying to get out of that habit. That's another bad habit. However, if a game's good, then the game's good. That's all I'm going to say. If a game is good, I will buy it and I will play it. And if I don't find it fun, I will refund that shit. I don't care. <laughs> so, like, there's no con to it. There are only pros. Pros, you watch it. If you like it, you buy it. If you don't like it after you actually played it, you refund it. You know what I mean? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the chit chat, the podcast video today. I'm going to have some more um, reactions coming out pretty soon here. Uh, basically, we're still not going to. We're still. I was hoping to come back to PlayStation Skylines 2. Six months go by. Still nothing has happened in this fucking game. I'm actually disappointed because I can't refund this game either. I'm straight up disappointed that I have to actually sit here and wait. For another year. 
year and a half, maybe. Ho hopefully a year. Like, if I have to wait any longer than a year and a half for the game to actually get good, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be so fucking mad, man. Like, it's been six months. I'm mad. If we get to the year mark, I'm going to be fucking mega pissed. And if we get anywhere past the year, Matt, uh, a year of waiting, I'm going to... I'm. I give up. <laughs> like, I'm never going to buy a Paradox game ever again after that. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. It lets me know you, that you like. It lets me know that you like this type of content. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Not stream, but the next video that I post. Take care and bye-bye.